Industries. Hello everybody, Togal here and welcome back to another episode of Mob Smasher Industries on the uh, FTB Beyond mod pack. And last time we built this um, MSI research lab right here and I think that's what I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it the MSI labs. I think that is the most fitting name and I have a really good idea of what I want to build over here. I I'm going to tell you in just a second. So I just want to give you a little bit of update of things that I did between episodes. I moved everything from the camp, all our materials, not all of them actually. Um, but I left dirt and cobblestone and andesite and all that over there. I don't see any reason to move this over here for now. It's just a quick flight over there or over there to the mob farm. And it's very easy from the top. I'll show you. Um, let's start with the downstairs here. You guys see I added a door right here. It's called the high tech door for molasses doors. Now, you might see in my chests every once in a while an, an empty spot. And it's just actually for molasses. I don't know. I've updated my texture pack a few times, the um, Faithful32 from f32.me. Um, but none of these are getting displayed. But it is... Uh, let's see if I can find it. It should be Door Factory. There it is, a high-tech door. And it's made with four gold, and in the middle here, there's two iron glass doors. You can't see those either, and they're made with three iron and just glass. And it's this door right here. Of course, we're going to have to get some pressure plates or something, but I thought it's a very fitting door for this area here. Actually, Wild Rascal um, gave me the idea of this door a while ago, and that was the reason why I made these three white, because this is a three white door, just like that. But I think it is perfect, right? Over here, I started planting all kinds of stuff. As you guys can see, actually, I don't want to harvest right now, so I'm just going to uh, take these few um, with me. I'll harvest later. I don't need to do this now. I harvested the cactus a few times. I did not set up any automation. I, I don't have any use for cactus just yet. If I ever need a lot, then I will go ahead and do it. And I spread one entire thing of canola right here. So this canola, and then I still harvest the canola over there because my power upstairs, the canola, it's awesome. So... This right here is our um, indigenous plants laboratory. I still need to put one of these doors in here. So where we're going to do all our research and so on with that. And then, of course, we also have a lot of other crops that we're going to play with eventually. Um, and over here, we are going to set up the new wing. And this is going to be our actual laboratory. There's going to be a cell with all the different mobs that we encounter where we can do our studies and so on, and we're going to have a lot of um, um, scientific equipment in here and so on. So that's going to be very cool. I definitely want to dress this up, but not today, because today, I'll show you in a second, we have a little bit of a discovery that I want to explore with you guys, um, and that's going to bring us on to probably our next chapter here. But let's go upstairs right here in this room. I put the power, okay? And I added another one of these old generators back here. So it's touching the same fermenting barrel. Um, and this little power setup right here is everything I need for right now, okay? When you uh, see right here, I have 800 canola in here. I made a frame drawer with the laboratory block. And I gave it one iron upgrade just so I can hold a little more. And I still have this bug right here, which is kind of annoying, but there's nothing I can do. Oops, sorry about that. Let me turn off my notifications here. There we go. So it's working and I made a power cell. I actually have two of them. The second one, I will uh, reveal later what I needed it for. And we just linked one card on here just so I have remote power. If I'm somewhere else, I have power going. Okay, that is the whole idea behind this. And let me think here. Other thing. No, it's not here. Okay. Anyways, and then over here, I have one bed. Right here is going to be a little bit of power generation. Then I was thinking of setting up probably like a medical station for our researchers, scientists, explorers, and so on, you know, if they have any problems. And this DecoCraft hospital bed right here is fully, you guys see, we can only sleep at night. It's a fully functional bed, which is really cool. And I opted for these inverted lights from Ender.io. They're quite cheap to make, just a little bit of glowstone glass and iron. And then a redstone torch to make them inverted. 
And they are really good lighting source. And you guys see here, F7, everything is lit up. Besides on the outside, but I don't care much about that. I have a um, mega torch. And then up here, you guys remember these? I brought everything over and I set up the machines over here. You guys see again, the power comes up from right there through here. And the way I hit everything is with Ender IO conduits. You guys see right here, I'm running them in the floor and then I made a painting machine. And the painting machine I used with the laboratory block right here to paint a bunch of these facades so we cannot see them anymore. And it works out really nice. And I did make, yes, these two machines right here, sag mill and alloy smelter, because I needed parts to make this painting machine. But so now we have two pulverizers, uh, pretty much a sag mill and a pulverizer and a smelter and a furnace and also the induction smelter so I can make alloys. And that is it. Um, we had this one already in this. I did make this door factory. And that is for these doors right here. You know, I'm pretty sure you guys have seen them many times. They're also auto close. And this is my way to getting back to the camp or over here to the mob farm very easily. I wanted this. I, I think it works out really cool. Um, did a very, very long mining session because I needed a lot of materials for what's coming up here. So this is starting to get full and I'm happy about it. Still only 10 diamonds, but ah, well, it's okay. I don't need diamonds today. Oh, yes. And the framing table right here. So I could use make I could um, make the this one drawer down there that frame drawer which I kind of want to keep that look you know with the laboratory blocks and so on and let me just no not you not you right here still cannot remember where my stuff goes <laughs> there we go all right so but I have some good news check it out um, let me go over here and show you what I'm talking about. And land right here in the water. So we have a little drone that headquarters gave us, right? Right here. And we used that because we wanted to map the entire area, right? So we flew around all the different chunks. And then we took that data, ran it through our computer. And this is the map layout that we came up with right here. Um, we can see the camp and the helicopter right there. Let me do it like this with F1. And then, of course, we can see our witch farm where you guys see there's a little extra building. I'll show you guys later what that is for as well. I don't want to spoil anything. And then up here is our labs. But during our mapping process, we noticed this strange looking structure over here, right? And I figured that we're going to get going with that. We're going to check that out today, what that is. And then also probably need to run some tests over there. So I need to bring my surveying equipment. This right here. Um, I do have the laptop on me. I think that's all we need. We we can scan the area right here with our scanning machinery. And then figure out what that is, run through the laptop, and then get our information. So why don't we go ahead and set out over there now. And it shouldn't be too long of a run. It's just not a couple chunks this way. And let's see what we find over there. So... I'm having a lot of fun in this series. I hope you guys are enjoying it as well. Thank you very much for all the likes and the comments. Um, it's much appreciated. Um, the only thing I noticed is people don't want to send emails to the headquarters, but I just wanted to remind you guys that we have a uh, Mob Smasher Industries email address that is down in the description. And if you guys want to have any, have any questions, any comments or whatever, um, you can send that to headquarters. And then um, when there is something that fits into an episode, I'll go ahead and show that email and then answer questions and whatnot. You know, it's part of our documentary here. Um, we should be getting close. Oh yeah, it's this way, right here. Let's see, check it out. Looks like an old temple. And of course it's getting dark, there we go. In case you're wondering how I slept so fast, our scientists found out that there's a sleep charm that when you equip that in your slot right here or have it anywhere in your inventory, you instantly sleep. It's very cheap to make and it also helps you a little bit of not getting stuck in bed. Um, apparently, there's a bed bug that keeps happening. But anyway, let's go ahead and check out this temple. Uh, da -da. There we go. Oh, there's an old dock. Some funky looking plates and it seems to be quite old a little bit broken down over the side and so on you can see lots of blocks are missing so this had to be here for a long time 
the old dock right here with a beautiful view wow that's a nice view okay let's go ahead. oh there's some slide going over here some landslide and oops oh yeah gotta be careful coming up here not that something happens let's look around first it's very overgrown can't even get through here okay and the other side oh there's stairs all right so let's come in here wonder what they use this for oh, let's be careful going down here very cool very nice lit up it's kind of amazing right it's such an old temple and all the fires are still going <laughs> and what do we got here oh wow i wonder if this was like a sacrificial uh, but then they wouldn't have stairs coming back up right seems to be going down all the way to bedrock so where do we want to set this up let's see i think we're gonna put our surveyor right here it's you know a 360 degree laser scanner that is going to give us a full layout of this temple let's place it this way and then let me get sarah out i don't know if i need her help for this today but i'm just going to go ahead and let this scan and we'll see what kind of information we come up with so before we continue with our episode for today guys i wanted to pop out a character for a second and um, just give you an update of all the things also that I added uh, that I didn't want to show until now because of the items that I needed to make. We are going to be doing the embers mold, right? And for that, I needed a lot of clay and also bone meal. And I don't have a skeleton spawn or anything. The clay was really not a problem because I live in this giant swamp area. So I, I have clay for days. Um, but I did farm, I think, about... 30 stacks of clay balls, um, really a lot. Um, but my problem was that I did not have um, any, any bone meal or very little, right? And so in order to get bone meal, I added a tiny little cursed earth spawner over here. I already had the cursed earth um, and the drops of evil, I should say. And all I did over here is make a small five by five dark room. There is a redstone lamp over here on the side. And another one on this side and it's been off for a while i had it run for a couple hours that was it and they're getting funneled down here into the same kill area okay the only thing i did add also was an ender tether right here and that is so if endermen they spawn here and a lot of times they teleported away but i wanted the ender pearls as well but this ender tether makes them come back to right here so i've been collecting ender pearls as well now the only thing i noticed is because these lights are on in here right it was lighting up a large area over here because this light came kind of around the corner here. So I added a little bit of dark glass right here and just changed the conveyor belts up here to come around and then come down. And so the spawn in here is quite good. It's, um, um, I get a lot of stuff. Let's just say it like this, okay? And I killed them all on punji sticks. Now these right here all changed to priority one from all these six drawers. And then this one right here, I changed to priority zero. So we'll still always try to put things into these drawers first before it puts it in here. And look at the amount of stuff I got from that little farm. So I have all the bones in the world, tons of ender pearls, and apparently slime balls. Makes sense because we're in a swamp, right? And I also have a bunch of these core stones from Ember. And I'm going to bring a bunch of these with me because we might use them for decorations or something. Because there seems to be no use for them. Um... At least, not that I know of yet. There is no use besides making facades. Okay, so I just wanted to show you guys this first. And then the next thing is I want to show you is this way. Let's go. And by the way, the clay right there, you guys might have seen. And also here, I'm trying not to take the clay that is directly in the area where we live. That's why I venture out further. And I think I mentioned that before. But in order to build that temple, I needed a ton of stone as you guys can probably imagine and i made a igneous extruder you guys know this machine for many years a bucket of lava and because i make smooth stone you need to have an endless water source and for that i made an aqueous accumulator and just place that down there um the aqueous accumulator does not need power but the igneous extruder needs power so i made um a set of solar panels tier three it's probably overkill for this 
but they're quite cheap to make and I have another one in my bag right there. And that one, or anyway, so here, and I made a java barrel on top, so we have endless smooth stone now, which is really handy. Um, and yes, and I also made, you guys remember we already had the shape card right here. And I made a shape card clearing quarry to help me um, with the temples. I needed to excavate a lot and so on, and I just didn't want to do that by hand. So I made a shape card quarry, um, which is, you know, just with class around it, and this needed four diamonds. So it's, it's you know, very inexpensive, and that is what I used this uh, simple power cell for, the second one. So I did not have to make generators and whatnot and bring it there with me with charcoal. I simply used the canola power, plus I put the second solar panel, because when you craft these, you always get two. And you guys see, it's, it's very inexpensive to make these solar panels. I mean, it's just... The, Iron, glass, redstone, a little bit of lapis. I think lapis, right? I don't even remember. Yes, lapis right there. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of a heads up and show you guys um, what I've been using and doing to prepare this area for today. And now we'll continue with the embers mod. So all the data was run through the computer and our researchers and scientists found out that this seems to be a temple that was based around a magic essence called embers. Um, and they unlocked a bunch of these blocks and so on for us that we can play around with. And the first thing they said is that you need to use an atmospheric gauge. Um, and that is going to show us why the temple was built in the area that it was. So when you pull this out, you see that there is a gauge in the middle of my screen now that indicates that there is something in this chunk. Okay, When you turn on the chunk boundaries right here, and now I'm going to go towards that temple and just look at the gauge. You guys see it moved slightly up. So when you go ahead and explore the world, apparently there is different chunks. You guys see, and it keeps going up and so on until we have this chunk over here that seems to be even higher. But the one that is the chunk that has the hole that goes all the way down to bedrock is the strongest one I've ever seen. Right here. You guys see, it's at almost three quarter. That is a really good indicator that they must have not used a lot of the embers whoever built this temple in the past. Um, and that is how you find out, okay? And they prepared us a backpack, a care package with all the items that they think that we could need today. And we're going to get started with that. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to have to harvest embers somehow, okay? And so we are going to... I'm not going to jump down because then I'm just going to bounce around forever and I don't want to do that. So we're going to have to set up a... Uh, a big machine down here that is going to um, excavate or hmm, extract. That's the word I'm looking for. Extract the embers out of the bedrock. It needs to be all the way at bedrock. I can't believe that there's no lighting down here. Let's put some lights so we can see something. All right. And you guys see it's flat bedrock here. And we want that to come up. It doesn't matter. Let's just put it a little bit away here. Um, let's see here real quick. It's this machine right here that we need to set up first. And that is called a ember bore. Right there. And then I need this guy. And now check it out. Um, when you place this down directly on the ground like this. I kind of want this to... Perfect. That's where I want it to go up. You guys see, you can't really tell that there's something going on. But if you place a block underneath it, and then you put this ember, but you guys see we got these wheels going right here. So I am hoping that this will actually work for our purposes, that we can just have this not sitting directly on the bedrock, that I can have it one above. At least that's what I'm hoping. Okay, so that is it. That is one block. The recipes are all very simple and we're gonna have to put a mechanical core up here all right that's the only two blocks you need to make um all the things in this mod cost you iron copper and lead and then of course this kamenite blend which you need a lot of um, um for example these ingots get one of them so to make one of these bricks right here you need four of that that means you need 12 um Clay and four bone meal per block. Okay, which is crazy to me. Um, 
Um, that's why I spent so much time farming all of this. And I still have plenty left over, so that's okay. I was initially thinking of making making the temple out of that, but that would have been crazy. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so this machine right here needs fuel. Um, and the fuel we're going to pump in via a hopper. Get a hopper out right there. And then into this, we are going to put... I'm just going to put two stacks of charcoal right there, and it's going to put it in. Now, to pump out of it... I think we can go on the top or on the side. I don't think it matters. Whoops, I keep falling down here. You know what? Oh, yeah, it doesn't matter. It shouldn't. I, I don't need to spend a lot of time down here. So let me put this one. No, actually, let me put that in here. That's going to be the embers bag. Okay, so number one is we can... There's gauges you can make. Okay, I made a few of them up, and we can put that right there. And anywhere you put a gauge on an embers thing, it shows you... Oh, check it out. You guys just saw slot one, uh, slot zero, one ember shard. So it is starting to harvest those. Break this block? I can. Sweet. I didn't know I can reach that, so we don't have that block underneath it anymore. Anyway, and this embers, by the way, is a finite resource. That means eventually this chunk will run out of it, but I believe it takes a very, very long time. All right, and we need an item pump, and then we're going to need a bunch of these and also a lever. And I'm going to flip the lever in a second. So what we're going to do here is... Uh, also, I am going to put a block above this one here. So if something falls down, it can't go into this hopper. Um, it's just protected and I can still access it. Anyway, so an item pump is... Well, it pumps items. I, I don't know how else to say that. Um, it, it extracts. It's like a servo or, you know, something like that. And in order for anything in embers to work, you always need a redstone signal. It's really nice because it connects directly. And when I flip this on, it will start sucking out the items. Um, it's already in here, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have to... Can I reach that from there? I should be able, yes. So we can get rid of this. We don't need that anymore. We'll come up here and I just need to run this pipe all the way up to the top of the of the shaft here guys i wanted to point something out i made way too many iron pipes i thought initially that the iron pipe is the main pipe but the iron pipe is used together with the mechanical pump the so mechanical pump plus iron pipe is for fluids and the item pump with the item pipe is for items i made these first thinking that that's what's going to be needed that is why i have so many left over and we won't need them but it's fine it wasn't too expensive I got the pipe all the way up here and one item I misplaced and I broke it and then one of these ember shards popped out. There's two different sizes. You got this, uh, where are they here? The ember shard and then you have an ember crystal. And you can get, thought that, yeah, no, no. You can also get these. Both of them can come out from underneath there. And it cost me, yeah, what is that? 61 of these pipes to come up here. And now it's going to have to, I'm going to have to figure out how do we want to set this up. Because one, I think, yeah, we're going to put the actual brewer thingy over here. Let's put that right there. So we're going to have to use this here. And actually, you can't, you can't really use these ember shards as a fuel for all these ember machines. They, they need a gaseous form of the ember. So we're going to have to cook that down into something. And let me think here for one second how I want to do that. Because I would like to have... Yeah, I'm going to have a second one up here. Oh my god, I hope this pops. Yes, got the pipe. Oh yeah, now check it out. I got two ember crystals. Because I actually want to have a chest up here. Because I'd like to be able to just get the crystals. And yeah, let's put it right here. And now we can put these back in. I see it keeps making those already quite quickly because I want to be able to just collect these if I don't want to use them all the time right because it's going to use them up uh, as fast as I can feed it pretty much so I'm going to need another item pump and a little more and we're going to need this thing right here the ember activator this thing right here we're going to put I'd like to have it a little bit off the ground but I don't want to use I want to use this so let's put that 
right here like that yes okay so from here we need to pump into the front like that and i can walk underneath this but i think i want to go one higher so let's do it like this and then put the item pump up on top right yes okay and then the item pump we put a lever again right there and now when i turn this on it will pump it into over here and then you guys will see that there's going to be a flame that starts in so now it actually pumps all it probably oh i can't open this ah do i have any crates on me yes let's use a storage crate then instead that way i don't need to change this and let me get my axe pretty sure Oh, I got it again. So much luck. All right, cool. So this just goes into the crate now. That's good enough. So I can still open. And it looks good. It's it's a very... I'm going to call it Dwarven Tech. Bot, okay? It's not really magic that much to me. More like Dwarven Tech. But also, again, we can put two gauges. We can put an Ember Gauge. And we can put an Item Gauge on this. And that's what we're going to put right here. I'm going to put the Item Gauge. And you guys see it still has an Ember Crystal. And we put an ember gauge oh sorry i forgot it doesn't go into here it goes up here because this up here actually holds the ember this holds the items and when we hover over there you guys see we're at 13,500 of 16,000 ember this is like rf or eu or mana you know it's just a a power source a an, an energy that's what ember really is um one other thing, by the way, I, I not did not do here. I did have a lasso um, in order to get us an ancient golem. And when you kill an ancient golem, that's where these core stones come from, okay? But if you kill it with a pickaxe, you have a chance of getting this right here, the Eye of the Ancients, which isn't bad. It shows you a little bit of lore when you hover over these activators and any, anything in Ember. But it doesn't really tell you much about how to use the machine, so... I don't see much use of having one of them. Maybe if I stumble across one, then I'll capture it and I'll show you guys in a future episode or something. But I didn't want to, you know, run around looking for them because I had a hard time finding them. Besides in the mob farm, but they die too easy. Okay, so now that we have this ember going up in here, what we're going to have to put on top is a emitter right here. We're going to need a bunch of these emitters, the receptors relays and uh, well maybe we'll need a gauge but let's start with this one right here and wait a second did i no i never made one of these right here i need to make a tinker's hammer it's lead four iron and two sticks let's make that real quick or that's why i have so many of these items with me oh my god no yes very good i got wood with me i was worried that i didn't bring any wood so let's go ahead and make one of these. That's the wrench of the embers mod. Okay, so we have one of them. And so we're going to put that right here. So we're going to put one of these emitters up here. So that is outgoing, okay? So you always transmit from an emitter to a receptor, okay? So this sends it and the receptor receives it. And there's only one connection possible per... So you cannot go from this one to a receptor and to another receptor. It doesn't work. So everything needs to be chained in this mod. It, it's a little bit tricky at times, but I'm sure that we can figure it out. So the next thing I want to do is actually I'd like to make a wall here real quick. Some of these right there. And that is... Should we put it one off the ground? Yes. Okay. Let's go ahead and put one of these down. And then on top of that, we're going to put that. And now there is a battery. Um, there's two different batteries. This one is the easy battery. The other ones we cannot make today just yet. Because we're going to need to advance in this mod a little bit before we can do anything with Dawnstone. But this is a copper cell. And this is a battery, like I said. And in this one, we can have a receptor on top. 
right there okay and now it's the first thing that we're gonna tie together with this hammer and you always go from receptor shift right click and then just right click to the emitter what oh i think i know what it is i believe that this guy here needs to be on the side so from shift right click right click I'm an idiot. <laughs> I think it will work on top. I forgot that we need to put a lever on these. I mentioned earlier that everything in uh, Embers needs a lever on it. So now hopefully it works this time. So again, shift right click, right click. And I'm going to have to get levers out as well. Brought many of those. And this one we're going to put right here. Yes, there we go. And now you see the ember going. And that is the actual gaseous form of the ember. And again, we can put another gauge on this one right in front so we can actually see this fill. And you see, it looks like it transfers 30 purples here. And of course, the further this is, the longer it's going to take. But this way, we can just store up a little bit more of this. And it seems to be out of embers. Oh, there's an ember crystal in here. 1300 I've never paid attention of how long it takes for this stuff to smelt down or maybe it makes more than it can currently hold wait why is this not going there we go I bet you that was it I'm, I'm gonna say that these crystals probably gives us 3000 to put in here wow and now we have nine shards so it can only hold one type Aha, okay, keep learning. All right, so, and then of course, out of this one, again, we're gonna need one of these. Um, uh, where are we gonna go with this? Uh, that's something I'm gonna have to figure out here real quick. Um, I don't really care. Let's, can I, I cannot put anything here. And I wanna put a relay up. To show you guys that an action out there right here. Where are we going to put this? Um, Can I put it right here? Yes. Okay, that works. Okay, so we're going to go to here. And they, by the way, um, count us both as a receiver and an emitter. So I can send something there and then something from there away. Okay, and now over here is where, where the magic is going to start. And again, I'm going to put everything on pedestals just because I think it looks better. And we are going to set this up. All right, let's 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 get this out. How is this going to work? We're going to need melters and we're going to need fluid tanks. And then we're going to need also a centrifuge, but also a stamper and a stamp base. We are going to make ingots. This is a way of ore doubling. And then later on um, with this mixer, we can also make dawnstone. And that is the goal for today. To make this dawnstone ingots because this one we need for a bunch of other blocks and this and especially when we get into the armor and the magical it's not really magic but it's a magic key kind of part okay to this mod um there's a lot to do with this mod even though it only has half a page of items um which is really cool so we're gonna have to like i said we have to set up these melters which turn an ore into um enough liquid for two ingots pretty much and i want this to be okay let me think here. i'm gonna be able to reach this this is tricky guys um i guess i'm just gonna put it down and then we'll talk about what this is gonna do it should be able to reach it okay so let's put down one melter right there uh let's go back a little bit just one more block at least so let's put these two here and let's put them three apart okay i could make more of these melters but i'm kind of trying to get it to uh, to go with only two melters because i want to be able to process the you guys see down here you can process five raw metals okay iron gold lead copper and silver but then you also can use the stone stone, which you need to mix in a um, whatever the thing is, a mix of centrifuge. 
you need to put copper and gold. So I need to set up a way that I can pump out directly to something. Um, I think that's how we're going to go first. Oh, I th think. Okay, so the items are going to come in here and the liquid is going to be in here. And now I believe that this mixer centrifuge, let's put it down here. The two liquids will come into here, copper and gold. And then the dawn is going to be on the top. Let's see if we can wire this up here real quick. So I'm going to need this mechanical pump and some of these. So I would have a mechanical pump in the front that goes directly to the, if I just want to stamp the metals directly. And then I have this one here that will go down, down and into this one. Yes, that works. And then, like I said, these are going to come. If I go down here, it's going to connect. Come to here. And here. Okay, and then I made two fluid tanks. Which... Do we need them? I'm trying to think. I only have one stamper made. Like I said, in the future, we might add a few more. But I think for now, so this would come out into here. So this is going to come to here. Okay, let's do this. Let's put this here. Haha, -ha, that might work. I have an idea. And we're going to use one tank. The other, it's. I'm sure they're not going to go bad. So eventually later, when we have the Dawnstone made, I only have one mechanical pump. Oh yeah, that's all I need. That's not all I need. We don't really need this tank. We can go pump it directly into the stamp base. But I did want to put a tank in between just for fun. I'm going to need to make a few more pipes here in a second. So I can make it that it comes in from the left. From the right. Or... From here. Okay. Let's put some levers. So if I want to pump this out, I turn it on. If I want to pump this out, I turn it on. This. Okay. I hope you guys are okay with me showing you the whole planning here. Not well, I'm wasting too much time. And then from here, yes, that's how we're going to go. So from there, again, I need to come one over. I forgot to mention this, guys. Um, um do 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 let me make another one of these real quick and then i can show you what i'm talking about is uh one two two i need two of these and one of this go ahead and make me one so check it out let's say you have two inventories i'm just going to use these two blocks okay let's say this is a melter and this is a tank and you put this mechanical pump in it okay and you put a lever and you flip it it will constantly pump from left to right Never ending. Okay. It is a very dumb pump that works on kind of not really gravity, but distance. But if you have an inventory just like here, at least one extra pipe, it will only pump this direction. It will never pump back this way because it can only pump out of inventories. It doesn't pump out of another pipe. I hope that makes sense. That's why I'm, I'm not going to put this um, stamper right here with just the pump because then again it will probably pump it back and forth but what i need to do is and let me check this here first because this is a little bit different here these guys place yes this is the base the way you place them just like a piston okay so now that i have this extra pipe right here this is mechanical pipe right nope the wrong one what? What's happening here? I need this iron pipe. That's what I need. Yes. So now it will only pump into this direction. Okay, so let's put the, another lever right there. And it will pump into the stamper. And then underneath this here. Guys, it, it's quite possible that eventually we're gonna, you know, reorganize this a little bit. But I wanted to set it up all in one swoop. 
so you guys can really see how it's supposed to work. And I'm putting a hopper here because the stamping process, it just drops the item into the world. Okay. And then we're going to need another one right there where we are going to put the stamper. Yes. Okay. So let's get rid of these two. And now this, this guy right there, let's put it there right away. It's going to need a receptor. These two need receptors. And this guy needs a receptor. The stamp base and the tank do not need any ember. They're just blocks. Okay. So now my problem is, as I explained earlier, is that I can only go from one to here. But then I cannot come from here to there. And from there to here. And from here to there. So this is actually a little bit of a problem in this mod. And I am locked in. Let me out. Uh, that I am not a fan of. Um, but it's just something we're going to have to deal with. There's nothing I can do. And that actually requires us. What? The wrong pipes. Iron pipe. Okay, I did use the wrong pipe. The problem right now is and how that until we get Dawnstone... I cannot make any of these splitters right here. Where are they? Right there. I need this Dawnstone, okay? So what I'm going to have to do right now is get some gold and copper. And we need to smelt those two. Make us some Dawnstone. And then we can make a beam splitter. And we can set them up up here. In a way that I can feed every one of these machines. Okay? So let me go ahead and grab this ore real quick. I found one. Yes! Finally! So many other baddies in the area, and he's shooting lasers. No. No. You gotta kill your friends first. Ah! Ah! I don't like these. No! I hate baby zombies. Leave me alone. Oh my god, this is such a terrible idea. Okay. How many hits? All right. Okay. Pickaxe. Pickaxe. Die. Yes. What? It didn't give me... What? What is this? What's going on now? Now this guy is shooting at me. Do I have a regular pickaxe on me? Oh, I think it doesn't work with the tinkers. Okay, um, quick. Before the night runs out, maybe I can find another one. Ow, whoa, easy killer. Oh, I don't have any cobblestone on me. Right. Will you stop bouncing? Let's go in here for a second, you know. Um, yes, I can get cobblestone. Where's my hammer? I'm just gonna make a... Give me some cobble. Um, right there. Oops, wrong. Okay, and I do have... Yes. Let's go ahead and make a stone pickaxe. I don't need you... Oh, don't run over it again. Dang it. Get this stuff out of my inventory. I don't need any of it. Or this. Alright, quick. My glider's almost out of juice. You're kidding me. It took me forever to find this golem. I mean, look at my glider. It's almost broken. And, and then it doesn't give it to me. That is such a ripoff. All right. No more gliding. There's one. Yes. Okay. Stop bouncing. Okay. One swing. Two swings. Stop. 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 Pickaxe. Oh, I see you. I gotta kill you first. Don't blow him up. Don't blow him up. Okay. Uh, okay, you dead. Okay, come here. That's the second one and I didn't... I, is there like a super small chance or something?
I of the... I know you're supposed to kill them with a pickaxe, so it wasn't even the the Tinker's pickaxe that was causing the problem. Oh man, what a bummer. This guy just spawned right next to me. Okay, maybe third time is the charm. Oh. No. I don't wanna... Yeah, you burn up. Get... Leave me alone. Okay, how much health do you have? 19. Okay, just pickaxe. Please don't kill me. Yes! Oh my god. I was about to give up and I was... You see, it's morning and he spawned right next to me. Oh my god, my heart. <laughs> ah, I can't take this anymore. Okay, let's go back. Um, you go in here. I keep you in there. Don't matter. And we get this guy. Don't need this. All right, which way am I going? Um, straight north. All right. Let's go back. Maybe this will carry me long enough. Well, I have slime boots on, so it's okay if I if it doesn't. Yeah, it's right over here. I remember these cherry trees. There we are. I see the temple. All right, now let's go downstairs. Oh my god, my heart, guys, my my adrenaline. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's eat. And I did pick that up. I just really wanted to try this out here. I wanted to put one of these fellas down. Let's put this away and that. I don't need you. Okay, let's see here. So now, when you put this in your hand, you say, see, nothing happens. But as soon as you hover over something, um, anything embers related, it gives you that, that tooltip on the right hand side, which is cool. But it says here, ancient brownstone, it has a composition that cannot be identified. Okay. So that tells me that this is just not used for anything but a decoration block. Um, and let's see here real quick. I don't remember hovering over this one right there. So let's see a stamper. And you guys see, it gives you a bunch of text. I did learn one thing from this in my, in my test world. Um, and that was that um, how these splitters work that we're trying to make. So again, that's it now. Let's go ahead and get this show on the road here. And I need to get... Let's do... Let's see how many we need. How much does it need per splitter? I need one Dawnstone per splitter. And I'm gonna need probably four. So let's just cook up two gold and two copper. Okay? And you just take these and you can funnel them in, pump them in, drop them in, I think. Or you just right click that. And you can see down there, well, let me just break this for a second. You guys see the copper is in here now. So you can actually see that. But there's the, okay, good. Hit my head, apparently. Yes, the low wall, low ceiling. And put that in there. So now we're going to have to stop jumping. We're going to have to come from here. Start wrong one from here to there. Will you travel? So this one is full. That's why there's no more amber flitzing around. Maybe it doesn't give it over to here because there's nothing on the other end. And now I need to come from this receiver to this one. What's happening? And this really only come out on the bottom, uh, on the top. Did I mess that up? Maybe. Okay, let's try this one. Well, you know what? Let's try this from here to there. It looks like it. That's a bummer. Okay. So, you go away. Go. So the, not the relay, this guy needs to be on top, and this guy we're gonna put on the side, you go there, you go here, and then you, please do something, oh, lever, don't forget the lever, let's put that, let's put it in the front. 
What's happening? Ah, I yes, I know what's going on. Because I shift right click, I think I did. Let's go ahead and do shift right click on the receiver and just right click on this. And shift right click on this and right click on this. There we go. That was my problem. It, like I said, this, you always shift right click on receivers and just right click on emitters. And this acts as both. So now this is going over here. Let's get... Um, I'm going to need to make a few more gauges. I wanted to have... Yeah, let's get three of these. I want to have a fluid gauge here. Wrong one. It needs to go on the bottom. Mr. So the fluid gauge goes right here. Right? No! It's pumping out from the... I am confused now. Let's see what this guy tells us. All right, so there's no fluid in here yet. And this up here is for the items. So the fluid is on the bottom here. Why are you not doing anything? Can't be in here or there because I haven't turned those on yet. Okay, check it out. Let's see. Melter a device uses energy to ember to melt down metals. The melter will accept ember power in its lower accept ember power in its lower half. Aha! I knew it. I knew I messed something up. Where'd it go? Yes. So this up here, I forgot. That's why you can drop items into it. That means the ember needs to come right there and right there. That's how it works. Okay, so let's do this again from here to there. There it goes. Okay. And so this is the actual fluid part. So now when I put these gauges on the bottom. Molten copper. So it is on top. So the bottom is like the furnace. That's how I'm going to say it. Okay. And why do I only have one of these? Where did the second one go? There. Am I missing something here? Did I put one on you? Yes. Okay. My bad. So this one goes on the top right. I will get it right, guys. <laughs> so this one isn't doing anything because this is melting. All right. Good. So this one shows us now it has 576 molten copper. And this one, we want to run into the centrifuge. So did I put levers on this? No. All right. So let's put two levers on that. Let's put one right there and one right there and pump this out. And now we should hopefully I'm this one. I'm sure that the liquids go on the bottom and the top one is where it then actually comes out with the Dawnstone. Still, maybe not. Oh, this is empty. Does it not show us down there? Oh my god, this is driving me nuts right now. Let's use this guy again. Each face of the bottom block contains a tank which can contain its own fluid. When the top block is powered by ember and required molten metals for a recipe are present in the bottom block, molten alloy will appear in the top one. So maybe this one just doesn't show when it has the copper. How much do you have left? None. Okay, so this one is empty. Now we can... I'm going to leave this on for now. But now we can take this one and reroute it from there. Let me just right click to there. Okay, and now it should start melting this gold over here. Probably going to take a second. There we go. Molten gold. 288 of 4000. This guy still doesn't have anything. Alright, I'm just, just going to have to trust this. And this is... 
How much molten is two ores? I think uh, five seven. Yeah, five seventy six. I think so. Yes. So I believe that this is empty now. If we check on the top real quick. There's still ore sitting in here, but I think that's always there. Yeah, okay, so let's just... Not this lever, that's the wrong one. Now we want to pump this one into this. It's not going to show us anything down here, apparently. So let's go ahead and... Break this one and put it on the top one so we can see when it has something. Alright, so these two are done. And now we'll reroute this from here... Now it should go to the middle one. Yes. And now I'm hoping this makes us Molten Dawnstone because these two are empty. Yes. Okay. Um, this one is going to go into here. So let's turn this on. Yes. 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 Very cool. Let me go ahead. I'm not I'm not sure why this machine doesn't show me anything. <laughs> I just have to trust this, I guess. So that means I can use this gauge over here for a second. And put that. We don't have any more sides on here, but we can see it. Can I place you on top? Yes. Very cool. 2304. I don't know what kind of weird number that is. And now check it out. Oh yeah, by the way, I want to let's use two of these for a change let's put this as a backdrop here so when the items get pressed they can only pretty much fall into that hopper and now check it out what happens when i turn this on it fills it up you guys saw it fill right there right and now we are going to come from here to there you're gonna go all the way over there yes it does Don't want to miss the first press that we're getting. I don't know how much power this needs. Oh! Duh. Hey, what? Wait a second. Did one of them drop any one earlier and I didn't see it? Oh my god. I bet you I did. Okay, so now we gotta use these right here. And we need to put that on the side of this. Okay, and see? Boom. It done. It just stamps it right over there. It should happen again in a second. And you only see that the, the ingots for a split second right here, right? Because it's making us down stone ingots. Bam, just like that. Very cool. I am very happy that this works now. And now with these dawn stone, I'm going to make more here between episodes. Um, so I have a bunch of these ready. So next episode, we can make a bunch of these splitters and then rearrange the power transfer right here. Okay. So, and I'm going to show you how these splitters work and so on. And then we're also probably going to get started looking into these tools. I'm really looking forward to checking these out. And the blazing blazing ray. And then, of course, the armor and so on. So, next one, uh, stay tuned for part two of this embers uh, exploration that we're having going here. And this is all empty. This is still pressing stuff. Let's check here real quick. I put two gold and two copper. I wonder if the 16... Yes, it's empty. So... Wow. That's a good ratio. Four ores. So that means one gold and one copper makes you... That's... 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 Quadruple, right? Am I... Am I miscalculating? I think I am. Anyways. Alright, guys. This, in the end, was a little derpy. Um, I did set most of this up once before to test it and so on. And of course, it's always easier when you are in a testing world than when you're actually recording. But this is a very cool mod. Let me know how you guys like it so far. And like I said, next episode, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into this, into some really cool things um, that you can do with this mod. And for now, I am simply going to... Oh, there was one more test I wanted to do, guys. And that is because this does not have anything. It's been going the entire time and these are always full. I wanted to break this pipe and see. So there's two. That is it, huh? Where did this pipe go up there? What do we still have in here? 
One ember crystal. So... Okay. I mean, I do not... Sorry, guys. I know that I said I'm done, but I wanted to show you one more thing. Then I promise you we're done. Go up here and one more. And that is every one of these things here has a storage. So when I take an ember gauge and, for example, put it on this last one right here. On the actual receptor and hover over it. You guys see the receptors hold up to 2,000. Then... The machine down here still has 4400 right so that means that in your network in the pipes and so on in this embers mod you have a lot of stuff hanging around it's not like in a lot of other mods that you used to that you know the battery has charged and then maybe the wire has something in the machines here every one of these pipes apparently can hold an item every receptor every um emitter and so on has power anyways I hope you enjoyed the episode and I can't wait to uh, record the next one with uh, the magic parts to this that like I said with the tools and so on and I'll see you then enough rambling hope you enjoyed it until then take care stay safe and bye bye